to good places it sometimes hasn't wanted to go, and making the lives of our communities better for a long time. But as Joel and Senator Barrios rightly noticed six plus years ago, we're still few and far between uh, inside the state house, whether at the staff level or at the elected level. And that matters for a few reasons, at least three important reasons that I can think of. First, it matters because a diverse state house means different and frankly better public policy. It means a broader array of tools and expertise in order to get to those better public, public policy outcomes. Diversity in public leadership helps bridge the gap between policymaking and our constituents' everyday lives in a better way. And let me give you a very concrete example of this. A few years ago, during the last economic downturn, many budget cuts were uh, rippling through state government as they are today. And as a part of this, the Bureau of State Office Buildings uh, moved to institute, quote unquote, cleaning holidays in order to save on janitorial costs. And this amounted to 20 days where cleaning services would be canceled for the buildings, which also amounted to a 20-day pay cut, or about a month's worth of income, for janitorial staff. Now, this idea quite possibly was born out of um, good intentions, geared at spreading the pain broadly across many workers in order to avoid more concentrated, uh, more concentrated number of layoffs, which is a solution that is right-headed in most, in most scenarios. But in the case of janitorial staff, it had the effect of making many working poor families, families that are working, uh, they're working hard, they're trying to, usually from immigrant communities, to make their children's lives better, uh, but they're barely on the cusp of survival. And it had the effect of taking their wages below sustainability, but at the same time denying them access to the safety net of the unemployment system. For state and local government to be able to understand and anticipate problems like that and to craft wide solutions to them, we need public servants that come from every community, from communities that experience that problem, uh, and from every experience in our commonwealth. The second reason that diversity, that the diversity you bring to public leadership is so important, because of you, we can look forward to a legislature in which every resident in the Commonwealth can see themselves, see their community, and feel an ownership stake in their government. I want to share with you uh, something a little personal on this one. After three months of being here and taking uh, roll call votes in the Senate so far, I am still a little surprised every time they call my name. And I'm more surprised still when I yell out yes or no, and someone actually writes it down, and it counts in the final vote. And it's, it's just an incredible thing to sit there and realize that the values that I was raised on, the values of my family, my neighborhood, my community, that they really matter and have real power in that chamber. And that's a feeling that every citizen, every resident should get to experience and your presence here in this building can be a conduit for that. The third reason your presence here in the State House matters. Your work widens the path for the next generation of leaders of color. We know from research and from experience that when women and people of color run for office, they can win, even in districts where voters of color are not the majority of voters. And the same is true for appointed positions and hired positions in public leadership. But the path for us is still narrower than it is for our white male counterparts. We have to navigate this narrow, this narrow path through a minefield of stereotypes and unspoken assumptions about what our race and ethnicity implies, uh, about our abilities, our values, our platforms, uh, unspoken assumptions about what a state senator looks like, uh, what a cabinet sec secretary looks like, what a chief of staff looks like. Uh, and unspoken assumptions about what being black or Latino or Asian or whatever or what, whatever you want to, what group you want to call, actually looks like. And we've seen this many times uh, on the presidential stage, uh, most most obviously. This past year, we saw, if you think of, uh, think of the presidential debates uh, before the primaries, we saw an incredible spectrum of personalities uh, and character traits up on those stages. And they were all generally accepted as you know, part of the, their candidates' respective foibles and quirks. You know, we had uh, Rudy Giuliani, the kind of lovable grump, uh, Edwards, the charismatic charmer, Mitt Romney, the polished, some would say over-polished businessman. Uh, Biden, he's, you know, he's not here anymore, so we can say that in the state house. Um, Biden, the experienced state, statesman with a habit for putting his foot in his mouth. Uh, Fred Thompson, the, the folksy southerner. 
But for our candidate of color uh, and our woman candidate up on that stage, they were nearly scrutinized to death in their deviations from the familiar. First it was, is Barack Obama black enough? Then it was, is Barack Obama Muslim? Then, it, uh, then he had to fend off stereotypes about black militants and anger uh, during the storm of the Jeremiah, uh, the Reverend Wright story. And likewise, we saw that uh, Hillary Clinton's laugh and her clothes and her vocal inflections were being parsed to the nth degree. The good news is, though, that these pathways are being widened every day. Secretary Clinton, President Obama did this, uh, of course, as well as our own Deval Patrick. Felix Arroyo Sr., uh, he widened the path for us by getting pe people familiar with the idea that behind a thick Spanish accent could lay a powerful intellect and a deep grasp of global issues. Um, Lisa Wong, I see Fitchburg strong in the front row here. Uh, Lisa Wong, she's pushed the boundaries for Fitchburg voters and for the rest of us in the state about what a qualified mayoral candidate looks like. Uh, Gloria Balmota and Sarah Roscoe have added two more and very different uh, models to our bank of images for both Latinas in public life and for leg state legislative candidates. And let us not also forget that Diane Wilkerson opened many people's minds uh, to the kind of intellect and power that a black single mother could bring to the state senate chamber. Equally important is the fact that you are widening this path right now. You are already leaders in your own right. Your professional accomplishments are already impressive, just downright impressive. Uh, and your creativity and your energy are inspiring. Uh, for starters, there's uh, Ms. Randy Powell, who dove right into the task of helping me build a state senate office from the ground up, and has been helping people of the, the people of the second Suffolk district get connected with their, with their government every day uh, with <coughs> dogged patience and grace. Um, we also have Mark Speller, great, great remarks, uh, who is changing children's lives for the better in Massachusetts every day through the RFK Children's Action Corps. Uh, Rob Santiago, serving our country in the armed services, and now taking the fight for LGBT rights to the next frontier through Somos Latinos. Who else do we have? Sharon Hajimakanga, where are you? Sharon, making economic justice happen every day in Boston through the Boston EITC Coalition. Uh, Damaris Gonzalez, building voter strength and changing views about Massachusetts Latino community through the stellar, stellar work of the Chelsea Collaborative. Yours are the voices and the minds that have persuaded, nudged, heaved, organized, and sometimes just dragged the Commonwealth forward and provided hope for the people of this state. More often, frequently, than the voices coming from within the House and the Senate chamber. But lest you begin to get comfortable or feel like we've won just by getting uh, inside the door here. And this is where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to part ways with Joelle, who has uh, accomplished the incredible goal of changing the complexion of the state house during daylight hours. I'm going to ask you to take it on to the next step, because just by getting our, our brown selves in the door here, we haven't finished uh, and we haven't won. There is, let me assure you, much, much more work to be done. There is both the opportunity, but more importantly, the need to do more for our communities who are not here inside the State House. Right now, as a few examples here in the State House, we're working on common sense solutions to protect homeowners uh, from hasty and unfair foreclosures. We're tackling the reform of our criminal record system so that people who have served their time are not rendered lepers in the job market forever. We're fighting to make our state's revenue system more functional for our communities and to make our collective economic struggle more fair by closing corporate tax loopholes. We're pushing to ensure equal access to the vote for Chinese and Vietnamese speakers through bilingual ballots. And we are proposing progressive solutions to well-known problems that have plagued our communities for a long time, racial profiling, higher, access, uh, higher education access, and youth violence. It gets me excited uh, just to think about these missions. It really does. And I know that you would not be here if the thought of these goals and the others that you're working on didn't excite you too. So, Take what you have learned at the Commonwealth Seminar. Bring all that your community has given you. Pack your smarts, pack your energy, pack your tenacity, and I ask you to join me here in the State House. Thank you so much. Thank you.